It's been a busy year for bird of prey rescue work that we've done, a little sideline that we do. And in this video, I'll talk about the tawny owl we recently rescued, and we had a release that kind of didn't go so well, and then finally a release that went far better. Tawny owls are very common in Britain. You often hear them at night time hooting and they're found in both rural and urban areas. Now the owl that we recently rescued was found in a rural area in the good old North Yorkshire countryside and the gentleman who found the owl discovered it just hopping around unable to actually get any lift off the ground. He was able to capture the bird, take it to a local vet's where they x-rayed the bird. They called me and said we have a bird that needs some time to heal up in an aviary and luckily we had some space. The x-ray identified a sprain-like injury on the wing. Now that sort of injury is not going to kill the bird, however it would render it unable to hunt so it would inevitably starve to death in the wild. And this sort of injury is quite a common one for us to deal with. It doesn't involve lots of medication and uh, procedures. It's mainly just food with perhaps some painkillers, get its health back up, allow it some time to recover, build a bit of strength, and release it back into the wild again. So the first thing we did when we got the bird is the usual check. I like to check its uh, feet, make sure there's nothing like bumblefoot there, any cuts or scratches. If there were, we would put some anti back on there and, and just keep an eye on it. Um, have a feel of the keel, that's the sharp bone on the chest of the bird. And it's a way of having a, a quick guess, if you like, of how um, chunky the bird is. If it's quite a soft feeling keel, it's probably got quite a bit of meat on the bones, as it were. If it's very skinny and quite sharp, then it suggests it's underweight. We also weighed the bird. Now, the way I actually weighed the owl without upsetting it, because of course it's a wild bird, it's going to be nervous around people, was to weigh the box with a towel inside, so I had that weight. I would then capture the bird from the aviary in the towel and pop it in that box, covered, and weigh the box again. And I'll be able to deduct the difference, and that's how I know the weight. When we first got the bird in, it was weighing just around nine ounces, which is very, very low. For a tawny owl, so it's been perhaps out there, unable to hunt for some time. After the initial health checks, I placed it in an aviary and provided some food. I used quail, a very nutritious food option, popped the painkiller in there as well, and put that in the aviary. And after about eight or nine hours, it hadn't touched the food, it didn't look like it was going to. It may have been feeling very nervous, or even just in so much pain that it didn't have the appetite. So I took the owl home and wrapped it in a towel. I then crop fed it to start with. Now, crop feeding is a way of directing food straight into the stomach of the bird, and the solution was a mixture of fluids, electrolytes, and the painkiller, and that went fine. I was then able, whilst holding it there in the towel, to very carefully give it some small pieces of mice and chicken, and it actually did take that from my hand. So that was a really successful evening. From then on, it would eat really, really well and it was eating four cockle chicks a day or three or four mice a day, chunks of quail and so on. So building up its strength and building up its food. Now the way we know an owl's ready to be released is to watch it in the aviary and I did notice that on, a, on approach it would try and fly around and, and escape. So we took it to where it was found and had a go releasing it. Now it did fly far better than the day it was captured just hopping around but it did just land on the floor and I was able to pick the bird up again, so it was a bit of a failed release. And the thing is, unless you've got a 50 or 60 foot enclosure where the bird can genuinely do long flights and build up its fitness, it's hard to tell sometimes whether they're actually ready or not. So in this case, took it back, gave another week or so, uh, more food, plenty of time to rest, and had another go. And on the second occasion, a week later, it flew, although quite low to start with, much, much further, and they went up into the trees. So there we have it, a little example of how we would rescue, rehabilitate and release an owl back into the wild. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. 